Item number SCP-4373, Object Class, Euclid, Security Level 4, Special Containment Procedures. Special Containment Procedures have been updated following the year 2020, August 25th. See Addendum 4373-2. The total global population of the Intro Order Cetacea is to be kept below 70 million. The foundation is to support continued commercial whaling of these species in order to prevent population levels from approaching this threshold. Any instances of SCP-4373-1 located by ocean-based mobile task forces are to be tagged with a GPS tracking device to, for study of migratory patterns or brought into foundation custody for testing. All SCP-4373-1 instances are to be terminated after testing. Description SCP-4373 is a pattern in noises made by cetacean species while communicating or using echolocation. While all cetacean species have been observed utilizing SCP-4373 in testing, only 22% of them are known to do so outside of captivity. SCP-4373 paralyzes members of the superorder Zerkiamorpha, aka sharks, that hear it, usually resulting in death by asphyxiation or predation. The effect of SCP-4373 decreases further away from the origin of the sound, becoming mostly non-effective past approximately 100 meters. Paralysis from SCP-4373 4373 is not permanent, though most sharks expire before regaining mobility. Cetaceans found using SCP-4373 in the wild or trained to use it in testing are designated as SCP-4373-1 instances. These cetaceans primarily utilize SCP-4373 for hunting sharks as prey or warding off predatory shark species. Cetaceans who do not prey on are not preyed upon by sharks, such as minky whales. I've been observed using SCP-4373 to disable sharks in competition for the same food source. Autopsies of toothed whale SCP-4373-1 instances have found that the melon, note, a mass of fatty tissue and air sacs found in the foreheads of toothed whales that acts as a sound lens for the purpose of communication and echolocation, transmits sounds faster than what the measured density would allow. SCP-4373 has not been sufficiently studied in other types of whales to determine what effect it has on their physiology. SCP-4373 spreads exponentially, affecting cetaceans at an increasing rate as the total number of SCP-4373-1 instances increases. Should SCP-4373-1 instances reach a global population over 70 million, SCP-4373 becomes widespread enough to resonate even with non-anonymous cetaceans. This creates a cascade effect that is lethal to all non-cetacean marine life within 500 kilometers of the affected cetacean part. See Addendum 4373-2. Addendum 4373-1. Discovery. SCP-4373 was first discovered by GOI-18153, the Shark Punching Center, in the part of Beluga Wales. Since its discovery, GOI-18153 have employed SCP-4373-1 instances to use their primary objective, combating sharks in ritualized type of combat referred to as Selechian Protilism. The exact date of discovery is unknown, as captured SPC operatives have not specified any exact time, stating only that they learned of the gnarly noises over decades of mutual blunt force justice against a Selechian menace. On the year 2018, February 14th, a member of the SPC seen with an instance of SCP-4373 was captured and brought to Site-189. Note, a site specializing in oceanic anomalies for questioning. The following was recorded by a Foundation submarine en route to Site-189 
prior to capture of the SPC agent. <laughs> Interview Log 4373-1 Interviewed Coach Bay Russell, a captured member of the Shark Punching Center. Interviewer, Researcher Michael Grooms. Forward, Coach Bay Russell was brought in for questioning in regards to SCP-4373 and any possible GOI-18153 involvement in its creation. Begin log. When do you first become aware of this sound? Huh? The one that paralyzes sharks? You had a porpoise using it with you when he brought you in. Oh, you mean SPC-3930? Is that what your organization calls it? I think so. You want to know more about it? Well, one day I just had gotten back from this mission against some of those damn hammerheads, and they had this tank full of porpoises. They told me the porpoises were a new anti-shock weapon that we were going to test. So I picked up one of them and named him Georgie, and we started training. So, this was when you took on the porpoise, Georgie. Yep, he was just a pup then, but I heard his parents were part of the program too. So, your organization has used at least two generations of porpoises. Did Georgie take to using SCP-4373 quickly? He did. It took a few months, but eventually I got it so I could make Georgie create SPC-3930 on command. After that, well, let's just say my job got a lot easier. Before I met Georgie, I struggled with bull sharks, but afterwards I was suddenly able to take on freaking great whites. But does that count? Huh? You. You're punching sharks that are pretty much already dead. And? I'm confused why you consider punching immobilized sharks as said can punch a sum. Also appears confused. Sir, we're the shark punching center, not the shark wrestling center. We don't care how the fist winds up in a shark's face, just that it does. It's not as fun as in the old days, though. Why not? I mean, it's just like you said, the sharks don't even fight back anymore. It used to be life or death every day. The adrenaline rush was like nothing you could believe. But then SPC-3930 comes along and the sharks just like float here and wait to be punched. Just some kind of acting like sitting ducks with that creepy look on their face. Look. There's this look they get whenever they hear SPC-3930. It's, it's hard to explain, but it creeps me out. I've never seen anything like it. Though I guess I'd be freaked out too if I was suddenly unable to move while the people punched me to death. Russell laughs and looks over his shoulder. Interesting. Are there any other effects that you noticed? Uh, other than the paralysis? Not really, though. Russell hesitates momentarily before continuing speaking. Doc, have you ever heard something called a pattern screamer? I can't say I have. Ah, okay. It's just something I heard get mentioned by the guys in charge from time to time. I don't really know what it means. Russell shrugs. Do you know anything about these pan screamers or their relation to SPC-3930? Eh, nope. Okay, then. Tell me more about Georgie. Georgie? I love Georgie, man. He's like... He has, like, that cute little puffer's face. Like, whenever I'm feeling down about shark punching or anything else, I just look at him, and he instantly makes me feel better, man. He's the best. Have you noticed anything about his behavior that's different from other puppuses? I don't know. I'm not really an expert on marine life. I got a degree in computer engineering before I started working for the center. You should ask one of our researchers. We hired a lot of marine biologists, so one of them could probably tell you. Anything else you would like to tell us? I don't think so. Can I go now? If you have nothing else to say, then yes. 
but will be in contact with your superiors. End log. Closing statement. Following this incident, Coach Russell was administered amnestics and returned to the shark punching center. The SCP-4373-1 instance was terminated. Addendum 4373-2 Resident Cascade Event Incident 4373-A In 2019, due to the efforts of ocean conservation organizations, the total population of cetaceans rose above 70 million. On the year 2020, June 24th, Site-189 detected a sonar pulse emanated from a part of humpback whales 400 kilometers away, followed by the mass death of all non-cetacean marine life in the area around the pod. An MTF-35, the bigger boat vessel, was dispatched to the pod's location. However, it never arrived. After a short investigation, the vessel was located by Foundation aircraft without any crew on it, but otherwise undamaged. The crew were never recovered. A cloning and restocking program was performed in response to the vast die-off to partially replenish affected marine life. A cover story blaming the cause of deaths on industrial pollution was released, and Class A amnestics were administered to affected civilian communities. SCP-4373's containment procedures were updated to the current state following confirmation of recontainment. A recording of the whale call recorded just prior to the event is below. Addendum 4373-3 GOI-18153, the Shark Punching Center Correspondence. Following interview 4373-1 and incident 4373-A, Boris Velikova, a senior researcher involved in multiple oceanic anomalies, contacted GOI-18153 in order to confirm the information given by Coach Russell. Their email response is transcribed below to Dr. Boris Velikova from Charles Plinth. Honorable members of the Secure Contain Protect Foundation, while our two organizations have come into conflict in the past, we still have a lot of respect for you blokes and the things you do for us. There are some center secrets we're not really supposed to be talking about, about like how we have a secret nuclear strike capabilities, or that we have a hidden moon base for high-risk shock punching experiments, or that the Grand Pretulator is really a chick. But I do think we owe you an explanation on this one, so I'll just go out and type it out. SPC-3930 is pan screamers. I imagine you'll have some questions for us, so I'll try to answer whatever I can. We didn't invent SCP-3930. We just discovered it. The first whales they could use it were a part of Belugas, just north of Russia. Back then, though, it affected everything, not just sharks. You see, these pan screamer aren't yours, old screw. Gribby tentacle monsters. They're a lot more abstract than that. They can exist in anything that contains pounds, and a song, even a whale song, is just a pound of sound. We don't know how the screamers ended up in the whales, but we are always looking for more developed occult modulation techniques, so we were, needless to say, fascinated. We did a few tests, and it worked like a charm. Well, other than a few of our agents not using enough soundproofing so they heard it, sank into the ocean and drowned. We were amazed by the result, but knew that we need a way to get it to work without losing too many of our own guys. It was a big problem. It didn't seem to have any easy solution. But eventually, we found a breakthrough. We found out how to communicate with the pan screamers. We realized they have been using SPC-3930 to try to communicate. We just needed to figure out how to decode the message. 
Once we did, we figured out that these pan screamers had some issues. Like, I actually feel kind of sorry for them. They don't exist. Or maybe just don't exist the way we do, and our existence is extremely painful to them. They also hate your foundation a lot. But we are the SPC, so we knew one thing. No matter how bad the pattern screamers were, the sharks are far, far worse. We thought that we could make them feel better about a whole unending agony when they'd be less willing to kill us. Furthermore, we realized that nothing makes people in Aldrich horrors happier than Circean Potalism. So we taught the pattern screamers to punch sharks. Turns out that non-existent smaller than neutrino fists are really effective anti circian weapons. And it worked. After a few years of communications, we managed to convince the pan screamers to only attack sharks. That's right, we potentially stopped the apocalypse. You're welcome, Secure Contain Protect Foundation. Charles Splinth, Bodacious Assembly. Addendum 4373-4. GOI-18153, The Shark Punching Center Threat Level Review Site-189 was redesignated as a monitoring outpost for all future SPC activities following the update of SCP-4373's containment procedures. Requests to upgrade GOI-18153 to Suppression Advised status were denied after O5 review. One new message. Access granted. Classified. Notice from the desk of 051. To Boris Velikova, Director of Site 189. Subject. Reply. GOI 18153 Threat Assessment. Timestamp. Year 2020, July 2nd. 1321 hours. Dr. Velikova, we understand your concern given your history of involvement with oceanic projects, but our resources are limited. It is hard to pencil and stop the idiots punching sharks between cleaning up psychic monstrosities and outbidding the GOC at a Marshall Carter and Dark auction in the Foundation ledgers. Current containment procedures are holding. Mass marine deaths are easy to explain away as a result of pollution, and it isn't hard to get nations to increase their whaling activity. Is it a shame? Yes, no argument there. Is it worth our time and money? No. Furthermore, I fail to see the danger in letting them pacify one anomaly themselves. If the center are willing to contain a potentially keter or a polyon anomaly for us, I say we let them. Future requests to re-evaluate the SPC will be summarily denied. Sincerely, 051. Addendum 4373-5 GOI-18153 audio file The attached audio file was recorded by Site-189 following scouting missions on SPC operations in the Arctic Ocean off the western coast of Greenland. 